Well, hey there, wackos of Twitter. What's up? We have finally got a Captain Marvel of color. Yeah, that happened in 1982. Uh, all right. We've got Jane Foster as Thor. Yeah, that happened in 1978. Uh, uh, finally, we've got LGBTQ representation in comic books. Yeah, that happened in 1998 and way before that as well. It's the, you are a listophobe! Where's Sal, I mean Freon, and welcome to it, another video. My dear friends, I'm going to tell you why people like us, meaning people who actually enjoy literature, will always be the problem for the modern uh, entertainment industry and, uh, well, in general, for the modern world. Because we know things. We tend to be a little bit more informed than people who have never, ever, whatsoever laid their hands on a book. Or a comic book, for that matter. It is literature. Because when I look at everything that is coming out today uh, in the midst of this superhero fatigue, and uh, let us admit, all those uh, films based on a superhero comic books, uh, it, there have been too many of them lately. And I think that uh, the film industry should move on for a little bit again. We were able to extremely appreciate it and were excited about it, well, years ago. Of course, firstly, uh, in, uh, well, such cases as uh, Batman 1966 with uh, much older people than I am. But uh, in my case, it was in the 1990s when I was watching Batman the Animated Series or, uh, well, the 1989 Batman. Or then, for that matter, uh, at the beginning of the 2000s when the X-Men uh, films started coming out, and the Spider-Man, and uh, the Blade, and it was all extraordinarily fascinating, and we were all excited to see our favorite comic book superheroes coming to life. But nobody was making uh, such a fuss about uh, the, the the fact that Ororo or the Storm was uh, a person of color, or Blade as well, or this or that. People were just excited about having their favorite superheroes uh, being well represented on the big screen. We were able to enjoy this. And it was not as often as it is today. We were not fed up to the back of our teeth with it. The problem with today is, well, many problems, but the, the first one is the oversaturation. Like every year, there's dozens of dozens of dozens of uh, films and uh, TV shows and what, what have you. And then secondly, People are very much uh, angry about uh, the fact that they are dragging social politics into uh, the films and the comic books and so forth. And yes, they are. But the main problem is that they are making it the focus of it. They are not making it about the story first. So make a good product first with a good story, good actors, good directing, good editing, good music, all in all, a very well-crafted film. And then you could put all your, like all the representation you want. But the other problem is that um, that which they are boasting about, all those movie studios, that they are putting the first somebody of something into the, the film, is in 99.9 .9 cases, is not true. It's uh, false, because those characters, all those types of characters, have been here for much longer than those films, in many cases, for much longer than those actors and actresses are. Those characters are actually much older than the actors and actresses that are portraying them. And of course, be because people are not reading today, and absolutely it is true, or, or as at least as far as comic books, the American comic books about superheroes, most people don't give a flying toss about them today. Do you know why? Because they are written very badly. Have you read recently an American comic book, a Marvel comic book? It's pile of trash. And DC Comics as well. They have successfully managed to destroy the legacy of 99.9% .9 of all American superhero characters in the American comic books, the printed form. And they are successfully tracing those steps in the films now. So the most recent example is those this, this Marvel film, or Marvels. 
So apparently they are going to put together the three most annoying <laughs> versions of Captain Marvel they have been able to come up with. And do you know why they're annoying? Because they are written like this. Because they are written by people who don't care about the medium of comic books, who don't care about those characters that have been around for a long time. Captain Marvel, the Rambo chick, she has been around since 19... What was it? 82. In that form. Now before, of course, that was a little bit different. It was a guy. And even before that, the original and proper Captain Marvel was actually that guy who is now being called Shazam over at Mar uh, the uh, DC Comics. Because, and then there were, of course, uh, some legal issues and legal matters. And he first appeared, I think, in a completely different uh, pub publishing company. And then, uh, as I said, obviously there were some legal matters between DC and Marvel. And that's why they had to call him Shazam in the end. And then Captain Marvel, the name went over to Marvel and they made him into this guy. And then, you know, there have been many uh, versions of that character, both male and female, both Caucasian and uh, non-Caucasian. But it, in each and every case, people enjoy these comic books and these characters because they were written well. They were written fantastically. Now, I remember... Uh, when I was a little kid, I was reading reprints of the old comic books, uh, X-Men comics, uh, by uh, Chris Claremont. And one of the versions of Miss Marvel uh, also uh, appeared there. And she was written well because she was written by a good writer. And it was illustrated by good illustrators. That's why I liked all those characters. So, and then... All this LGBT re representation in everything today is like, yeah, I mean, that's been around for a long time as well. The oldest case I can remember, and you have to think about the fact, consider the fact that I'm relatively young, uh, I'm, I've just turned 30, is uh, the, um, the Stormwatch comic book by Warren Ellis and Brian Hitch. And in the uh, fourth issue from 1998, that I think, if I'm not wrong, this is the first appearance of uh, Midnighter and Apollo. Those are openly gay characters. They are a pair. They're, they are a couple. But do you know what makes them different from all the characters in today's comic books and films? Their relationship has never been made into the focus, and the primary focus of the comic book, of the story. The focus of the story was always something heroic, or they were uh, investigating something. It was just an, a superhero, more or less superhero comic book. It was written by Warren Ellis, so it was always a little bit different than the mainstream. And so the their relationship was only implemented into the story as something natural, as something that happens in 3% may sometimes, well, I would say that less than 3% of, of the cases in the entire world. But it seemed natural, and it was good, because it was a very well-written comic book. The quality was put first, and then everything else came later. That's why people enjoyed it. That's, that's why people liked it. That's why Warren Ellis became a famous writer. So the problem is, of today's entertainment, unoriginality, creative bankruptcy... The oversaturation with uh, different themes and different genres. And the absolute ignorance for history and the history of the entertainment in industry. And the medium and the different media. The incompetence of the creators that are being hired in Hollywood. But uh, I want you to tell me what you think uh, about all this. And that will be all. Thank you very much for watching. And I'm out of here.